Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, next on the agenda, I'd like to welcome Laura Morris, Be the Influence Coalition Project Director, who will present a program update to the board. Welcome, Laura. Well, thank you so much. Am I able to share my screen right now? Yep, Laura, I've made you a co-host. You should be oh, able to share. Thank you so much. How is everyone on this rainy, a Latin, I hate to say another rainy night? Pretty good. Hopefully better weather coming. For sure. Let me see if I can get my PowerPoint to come up. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody see that? Yep. Yay. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much. I know how busy everybody's time is. We do feel it's really important just to give an update every now and then as to who the heck we are, what we do, and uh, what we've done fairly recently. Um, this will be some pre-COVID stuff, but we'll also give you an idea of some of the things we've been able to do post-COVID as well. And um, we're generally very involved with the school district. Uh, COVID's made it a little harder to get into the schools, but um, there's still a lot that we've tried to do. Um, so just so you know, we are a drug-free community grant. We're out of Washington, D.C. Um, we use a very evidence-based strategies um, to work with the whole community. And above and beyond the schools, these are all the stakeholders that we work with. So parents, youth, schools, business, religious, every nook and cranny of the community um, we are involved with and they, they are part of our coalition. And so our mission is just this community collaboration. And as I say to many people, it takes a village and the village is you. Um, and we're just all working together to reduce youth substance misuse. Um, we use seven strategies. You're probably familiar with these and a lot of the strategizing that you do. Um, and I'm just gonna show you lots of pictures to give you an idea as to what's going on. Um, you guys are familiar with the main integrated youth health survey. So you probably know a lot of the results, but we know that generally, um, you know, 25% of youth are still drinking. Um, the marijuana numbers are going up. The vaping numbers are going through the roof. Um, while tobacco goes down, vaping goes up. Um, and even prescription drug is staying pretty steady at about 12%. Um, but one of your past students, Tatiana, did a little study um, with us with uh, St. Joe and did find out these are a little bit more current for a small group that she did very recently in 2021. So 72% of the students are not using substances, but 22 are still drinking alcohol, 18% using marijuana, 14% nicotine, um, and 12% other drugs. And I would venture to guess it's quite a bit higher than that. We do a lot of focus groups and that's what they say. Um, so we do tons of youth engagement. Um, you've probably seen us in the schools, education, the health classes. We try to get students to do their own uh, facilitation. So we do a lot of peer to peer um, training. And I'll tell you about our arts and prevention program. Uh, you'll see some pictures, but we're really trying to get music, art, theater, uh, in terms of how do we build resiliency, particularly now with COVID where people just feel beaten down and kids are dealing with isolation. Um, and that's where we're seeing higher substance misuse as well as suicides and um, anxiety and depression. Um, we, do, we use youth uh, quite a bit with youth, with the legislators and the local government because nobody says it better than they do. <laughs> um, and these are many different programs that we have. And at some point in time, um, when you have a need, we have a resource. I guarantee you we have programs and everything. Um, Sidekicks is peers talking to peers. We train kids to be on main youth court so they can make decisions for their peers. Um, we did have an annual youth summit canceled this year, but we do all these types of contests um, and we will get into the different projects here with some pictures. It's just a little bit more fun to look at pictures of our youth groups in the schools. There's Miss Eliza Adams, who we miss very much. Um, this is called Family Sculpture. We show what it's like to have some misuse in the family and how it affects all the members. Um, this is a lot of the, a couple of older pictures from Raymond. Um, and Doug Daigle at the high school is our BTI advisor for them. Um, the arts and prevention series is something we kicked off particularly with COVID and we've been working very heavily with the Katahdin School. Um, we did one program on Van Gogh and how that relates to um, expression because he suffered so much with anxiety and depression and, and that type of thing. And then the students were able to do a picture and then transferred it over to chalk art outside. 
Um, we have now commissioned a guy to do this puzzle project. His name is Glenn Simpson. He's in 21 years of uh, recovery himself. He did it with people in recovery, but I've commissioned him to come in and to do it with youth on hope and resiliency. And so they each make puzzle pieces. And this is him with the alternative high school. And then it all gets put together. And eventually we're going to we're going to uh, hang that at the high school with a panel discussion with experts that can come in as a community community piece where we can really address hope, resiliency, um, and adversity with this puzzle project. Um, and we're kicking it off uh, at an event coming up soon. We just completed our DEA 360 dance program. There were only about 10 students, but it was after school. And um, they really, we did some interviews afterwards and they really said it helped them to cope during this time. Um, these are some of our past theater programs where we train the peers to do presentations for the schools below them. So this is a group called Respect and they did a program for the elementary schools. Um, and we will be doing more theater coming up in May with an after school program as well. Uh, we try to, to do everything we can just to make things fun. This is called Stay in the Game. It was a dodgeball game a little while back. Um, our youth summit is usually annual. We will get that back up and running again. We start tobacco education very early in the elementary schools. This is third uh, and fourth grade, I think, third grade. Um, and I credit Eliza Adams really did a great job in the middle schools doing like vaping programs called Escape the Vape Night and tobacco open houses. We brought 62 kids to the uh, Capitol two years ago to talk about um, to the legislators on um, why vaping is so dangerous and not allowing that to target youth. We were supposed to bring 120 this year and it got canceled during COVID, but we were able to do a really cool panel discussion to all of our legislators. And we had about 12 experts and four youth and it went over really well. Um, we credit Matt Sear so much. He really primes the kids up when we get them um, to really understand so much about um, prevention. Um, if you don't know about this project, I'm sh I know Drew does, but if you don't know about this seventh grade project that the teachers at uh, Wyndham Middle School put together, it is phenomenal. We've brought it to national conferences and it is really what would uh, the opiate crisis be in Maine in the future? Uh, what would the future be like without the opiate crisis? What would it be like with the opiate crisis with a back to the future theme? I think they had like 500 people at the open house and it, these kids in seventh grade go off and um, into eighth grade knowing exactly how opiates um, affect them and how they can uh, prevent use. And so there we are in Washington DC representing that project. Um, we, are, we just started a new parent engagement committee. It's been a little slow with parent engagement and that's where we really reach out to you guys to say, please spread the word of everything that we have. These parents need these resources. A lot of um, what youth are dealing with is because of what's going on at home with parents and we just can't get to them enough. It's quite a challenge for us. We are part of the PTAs, but any programs we have or any programs you need, please help us to get it to them. Um, parent open houses, we do community involvement presentations. Um, we're very involved with law enforcement, obviously. We do a beverage server training, and we're particularly working with um, the hospitality industry, industries that are working with youth to know what do you do with youth um, when you're employing them. Uh, Marge might, Marge, you might recognize this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this was at the CADCA conference. I want you to know um, that we are really wanting to support you in any, any education you need. So if you find that there's a class that you would like to attend or if someone wants to go with us to a conference one year, um, we can probably subsidize that. And anything we can do to train you so that you know more about how to um, administer more prevention in the community. Um, we also are at all public safety, national safety days. We won an award at the parade for Summerfest. Um, and this year, because of COVID, we started a family fun fitness and film festival. We're gonna be doing it again in August. And this was really to help with coping skills, but also to offer resources at a time when it's really difficult. And some of the resources we wanted to have were like Narcan training, um, resources of facilities for youth to go to and parents. Um, this was mindfulness on the beach. We had yoga. Um, so 
team games. And again, we're going to be doing it again in August. We would love your support. Um, spread the word. Um, we did change tobacco policy for the schools and community re very recently. Um, this is the national conference. We would love to bring youth and people there. So let us know if you ever want to go. We get to talk to Susan Collins and Angus King directly and tell them what's going on in Wyndham Raymond. So it's pretty cool. Um, this was a vaping night. We want to get back to that. We recently did some on-site and now some uh, virtual Narcan training. Everybody should know how to use Narcan. It saves lives. We have people coming out of the woodwork crying because their child needed it three weeks ago and didn't know how to administer Narcan. So um, when we do have these nights, we would love to have more people attending. Um, we work with the religious community and on May 16th, we're doing a big project called the Day of Abundant Hope. It is meant again for families, for youth, for parents. We are allowing the religious community to kind of amplify the message of resiliency um, and, and addiction. And we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna have Narcan training there. And we're gonna have the interactive games, that type of thing, swag bags with resources. And if you come, you also get to put your name in for an overnight at the Hampton Inn on Commercial Street. Um, we work with the Chamber of Commerce very, uh, very uh, deeply and uh, we're the Rotary. Um, and so we really try to be part of the community and they've been very helpful. Um, I credit Christine Burtonette with going like full force on this. We started an ACES task force and she took it over and she's doing amazing things. We're so happy to be part of her group. So we are now on the cell work group. So excited. She's thinking of a mental health summit. Um, we do have quite a few experts that are gonna try to make that brainstorming meeting. Um, we have training videos. I don't know if anybody watches them. <laughs> um, we did roll out a mindfulness project. We didn't get a lot of attendance. And again, really what we're needing help with is attendance, attendance, attendance. Um, we have presentations, let's see. So we will be bringing this movie, Jacinta, to the Westbrook Drive-In. It is nationally known. It is about a heroine. Um, story where she overcame and is in recovery. She's from Maine, but it really has a lot to do with resiliency as well. Um, and we'll let you know when that comes up. Uh, we think it would be great for sports groups, for um, coaches, uh, any groups in the schools and the community. Um, you probably have seen our mural around. Um, this was meant to just bring all the schools together and we're planning more of this stuff. That's why the puzzle piece project, we're gonna bring it school to school. But this gives kids, particularly those who fall through the cracks, a chance to be involved in something. And then they see it everywhere that they go. This was at the movie theater forever. It was in the schools. Um, if anyone wants to hang it, let us know. We'll bring it your way. And I don't know if you notice, but we're in the media quite a bit, um, targeting parents, targeting the myths about today's substances. We are hitting, you know, we're up against these eight, these uh, uh, multi-billion dollar uh, companies that are, are just educating in all the wrong directions. And so it's an uphill climb. And that's why your help really helps us. Um, we did start an Empower Me series for COVID. We didn't have a huge amount of attendance, <laughs> but um, we will keep trying. And here's the fun, Fitness Fun and Film Festival. May 16 is the Day of Abundant Hope. Um, and so I guess the reason why we do this presentation is just to make you aware of what's going on with us, but also we really treasure what's going on on the ground from your perspective. You know, you are the school board, you know what's going on in the schools. If you need resources, let us know and we will create them. Um, but we really want you to take advantage of those resources and help us to get the word out to parents and community, encourage attendance at all these community and school trainings. Um, when we could get into the health classes, that was huge. At least we knew every child was getting affected by a lot of the curriculum that we have. We work with the Opportunity Alliance, the Portland City of Portland Health Department. There's so many amazing experts that can come into your classes. Um, and it was wonderful when your schools allowed us access. Um, we'd love to get, we, we have some information for the sports clubs, that kind of thing, but they need more of it, more of it. And just so people know what BTI is and that they know that it's a resource they can go to is helpful. Um, you guys have been great being on our panels. I know Chris, Christine, others have 
work with us just recently for vaping and our legislators and policy changes. Your voices cannot be heard enough and they really make a difference. Um, and with that in mind, on Friday, um, we are, me and my project coordinator, we're gonna speak up about the Flavor Hooks Kids campaign. The flavors is the number one reason why kids are using vaping products and it is horrific, horrific what it is doing to our youth. If you would like to have your voice heard, I will send you information, let me know on how to register um, and make your comment known, but they are wanting as many voices as possible um, at nine o'clock on Friday morning. So please let me know if you wanna be part of that. Um, our website has tons of resources for parents um, and community members. So questions and please let me know what we can do. <laughs> We're here for you. That is the point. Thank you, Laura. This is pretty impressive, all the resources that you offer. Um, thank you for all your efforts on behalf of our students and our community. It's really appreciated. Um, hopefully once things, if we ever get back to what would be considered normal, um, you'll have greater participation in your your programs. You have some really creative ones. It's really impressive. Are there any questions from the board for Laura? I don't see any. Well, we really appreciate your time. Yeah, and I wanted to say that um, there's a, a student we're doing a video of. She's wants, she talks about how helpful your whole district was in um, changing the trajectory of her life. So we hope to play that for you sometime soon. You should give yourself a pat on the back. You guys are amazing. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Any other comments? Well, thanks again. Truly, truly appreciate all your efforts and your work. And um, we will reach out if we have a need. Sounds like you can help us. All right. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Bye. Next on the agenda is the district school calendar. May I have a motion, please? Marjorie, you are muted. Okay, one more time. I move to approve the 2021-2022 district school calendar. Second. Any public comment? I don't see any. Any board discussion? I don't see any hands. All those in favor? And now I can tell you, Chris. Yay! <laughs> Everybody has to have a turn with it. You know that. Kate Bricks? Yes. Jenny Butler? Yes. Marge Gavoni? Yes. Pete Hensler? Yay. Anna Keeney? Yes. Kate Levier? Yes. And Christina Small? Yes. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda is RSU 14 cost sharing agreement. May I have a motion, please? I move to maintain the current RSU 14 cost sharing agreement between Raymond and Wyndham. Second. Any public comment? I don't see any. Board discussion? All those in favor? Kate Bricks? Yes. Any Butler? Yes. Marge Gavoni? Yes. Pete Hensler? Aye. Anna Keeney? Yes. Kate Levier? Yes. Christina Small? Yes. Thank you very much. May I have a motion for teacher's second year probationary contract status? Yes, I move to approve the superintendent's recommendation to grant second year probationary status for the 2021-2022 school year to the teachers uh, listed below. Lori Bond, gifted and talented teacher, Jordan Small Middle School. Caitlin Maroney, speech and language pathologist, Manchester Elementary School. Caitlin Cashman, pre-K teacher, Raymond Elementary School. Kate Tompkins, pre-K teacher, Raymond Elementary School. Victoria Drew, standards-based teacher, Raymond Elementary School. Olivia Hamilton, grade one teacher, Raymond Elementary School. Chelsea Scott, English teacher, Wyndham High School. Stephanie Gray, special ed site coordinator, Wyndham High School. Amber McKenzie, 
special ed teacher, Wyndham High School. Dakota Duplissy, special ed teacher, Wyndham Middle School. Mary Dempsey, school counselor, Wyndham Middle School. Logan Hallett, seventh grade math science, Wyndham Middle School. Mary Goucher, special ed teacher, Wyndham Middle School. Mitchell Hodge, special ed teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Stephanie Colson, kindergarten teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Brittany Cabana, speech language pathologist, Wyndham Primary School. Sierra Sawyer, grade two teacher, Wyndham Primary School. And James Wallace, grade one teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Second. Any public, public comment? Any discussion from the board? All those in favor? Kate Bricks? Yes. Jenny Butler? Yes. Marge Gavoni? Yes. Pete Hensler? Aye. Anna Keeney? Yes. Kate Levier? Yes. Christina Small? Yes. Thank you. May I have a motion for teacher third year probationary contract status? I move to approve the superintendent's recommendation to grant third year probationary status for the 2021-2022 school years to the following teachers listed below and I will read them. Jed Bloom, Applied Technology STEM teacher, Jordan Small Middle School. Charles Martin, Health teacher, Jordan Small Middle School. Jean Demers, Standards-Based teacher, Manchester Elementary School. Megan Juhaz Nehez, Resource Room teacher, Manchester Elementary School. Catherine Hatfield, Resource Room, Manchester Elementary School. Kimberly Fournier, Social Worker, Manchester Elementary School. Julie Clark, Art Teacher, Manchester Elementary School. Susan Gagnon, Grade 3 Teacher, Raymond Elementary School. Sarah Childs, Grade 2 Teacher, Raymond Elementary School. Kelsey Mac McVeigh, Physical Therapist, Raymond Elementary School. Tracy Pearson, Peterson, self-contained teacher, Raymond Elementary School. Jennifer Smith, kindergarten teacher, Raymond Elementary School. Lisa Zeisler, speech language pathologist, Raymond Elementary School. Chris DiBernato, DiBernado, sorry, math teacher, Wyndham High School. Kenneth Poulin, social studies teacher, Wyndham High School. Timothy Sear, occupational therapist, Wyndham High School. David Dyke, Latin teacher, Wyndham High School. Noah Esty, social studies teacher, Wyndham High School. Catherine Harry, music chorus teacher, Wyndham High School. Megan Flanagan, physical ed teacher, Wyndham High School. Jennifer McVeigh, psychologist examiner provider, Wyndham High School. Christopher Maloney, physical science teacher, Wyndham High School. Tammy Lorenzata, Lorenzati, technology, Instructional Leader, Wyndham High School. Anne Fugari, Health Teacher, Wyndham Middle School. Hillary McHugh, Art Teacher, Wyndham Middle School. Michaela Lothrop, Special Ed Teacher, Wyndham Middle School. Dale White, School Nurse, Wyndham Middle School. Lindsay Swizek, Health Teacher, Wyndham Middle School. Jamie Smith, Grade 6 Teacher, Wyndham Middle School. Sarah Bolia, Occupational Therapist, Wyndham Primary School. Beth Chiazzo, Kindergarten Teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Marissa Mishu, Kindergarten Teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Susanna Stevens, Grade Two Teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Heather Reed, Grade One Teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Marissa Rhodes, Grade Three Teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Jamie Beal, Grade Two Teacher, Wyndham Primary School. And Elizabeth Smith, grade two teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Well done. May I have a second? Second. Any public comment? Any board discussion? All those in favor? Kate Bricks? Yes. Jenny Butler? Yes. Marge Gavoni? Yes. Pete Hensler? Aye. Anna Keeney? Yes. Kate Levier? Yes. Christina Small? Yes. Thank you. May I have a motion for teachers contract status, continuing contract status. I move to approve the 
superintendent's recommendation to grant continuing contract status for the 2021-2022 school year to the teachers listed here. Kimberly Hutchins, resource room teacher, Jordan Small Middle School. Mary Ellen Johnson, resource room teacher, Manchester Elementary School. Tracy Henderson, grade five teacher, Manchester Elementary School. Deborah Miller, grade five teacher, Manchester Elementary School. Robin Greeley, art teacher, Raymond Elementary School. Kristen Chavanel, librarian, Wyndham High School. Ryan Woodside, life science teacher, Wyndham High School. Emily Macaluso, biology teacher, Wyndham High School. Alyssa James, art teacher, Wyndham High School. Stephen Adams, physical science teacher, Wyndham High School. Nicole Densmore, English teacher, Wyndham High School. Krista Haberstroh, school counselor, Wyndham High School. Michelle Lane, computer teacher, Wyndham High School. Darcy Finn, special education teacher, Wyndham High School. Jeff Conant, special education teacher, Wyndham High School. Ann Leverett, math teacher, Wyndham High School. Joyce Babbitt, library media specialist, Wyndham High School. Megan Gurin, speech language pathologist, Wyndham Middle School. Ann Maria Goodwin, grade seven teacher, Wyndham Middle School. Kimberly Hartwell, resource room teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Amanda Carver, kindergarten teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Brianna Carbone, grade one teacher, Wyndham Primary School. Haley Dufour, grade two teacher, Wyndham Primary School. And I apologize if I mispronounced anyone's name. Thank you. I have a second. Okay. Any public comment? Any board discussion? All those in favor? Kate Bricks? Yes. Jenny Butler? Yes. Marge Gavoni? Yes. Pete Hensler? Aye. Anna Keeney? Yes. Kate Levyang? Yes. Christina Small? Yes. Thank you. May I have a motion for renewal of administrator contracts? I move to approve the superintendent's recommendation to grant extended contract status for 2021 through 2023 to the following administrators. Randolph Crockett, Principal, Jordan Small Middle School. Elizabeth Peavy, Principal, Raymond Elementary School. Kyle Rhodes, Principal, Wyndham Primary School. Danielle Donini, Principal, Manchester Elementary School. Andrew Patton, Principal, Wyndham Middle School. Ryan Karen, Principal, Wyndham High School. Crystal Vargo Ward, Assistant Principal, Manchester Elementary School. Phil Rossetti, Assistant Principal, Wyndham High School. Vanessa Mishu, Assistant Principal, Wyndham High School. Diana Jordan, Assistant Principal, Wyndham Primary School. Craig Hames, Head of School, Assistant Principal, Katahdin Program. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any public comment on this motion? Seeing none, any board discussion? Seeing none, oops, nope, seeing none. Um, all those in favor? Kate Bricks? Yes. Jenny Butler? Yes. Marge Gavoni? Yes. Pete Hensler? Aye. Anna Keeney? Yes. Kate Levier? Yes. Christina Small? Yes. Thank you. May I have a motion for contract approval, Raymond Elementary School Office Renovation? I move to authorize the superintendent to enter into contract with Great Falls Construction of 20 Mechanic Street, Gorham, Maine, to complete the interior renovations associated with the revolving renovation project, Raymond Elementary School Security Upgrade, in the amount of $623,651, as reflected in the base bid in alternates one through five. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Any public comment? Any board discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Kate Bricks? Yes. Jenny Butler? Yes. Marge Gavoni? Yes. Pete Hensler? Aye. Anna Keeney? Yes. Kate Levier? Yes. Christina Small? Yes. Thank you. May I have a report of the secretary? I move to approve the minutes of the April 28th, 2021 meeting. Second. Thank you. Any public comment? 
Any board discussion? All those in favor? Kate Bricks. Oh, I'm sorry, March. Did you have something? No, I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna voting. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I saw your hand move, and I'm like, I, it did. My mistake. I, all right. Mine is I. Yes. Jenny Butler. Yes. Marge Gavoni. Yes. Pete Hensler. Aye. Anna Keeney. Yes. Kate Leviang. Yes. Christina Small. Yes. Thank you. Uh, moving on to committee reports. Um, finance, anything? No, we did not met. Okay. Um, facilities. Scott's not here. I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, Kate, I'll actually, I have something during my superintendent's report, so I will report then. Perfect. Nothing to report from policy or curriculum. I do want to um, mention that we're going to have an addition to the committee reports. It's not reflected on this agenda, but Christina has graciously um, volunteered to be the technology um, rep. There's a lot of work behind the scenes going on, and she's attending meetings and We'll be reporting out and all that wonderful work um, at our next meeting. So thank you for Christina for um, stepping up. It's a big topic that I think we need current information from. So thank you. I'll have um, 16 slides prepared. Thank you. We, we are very much looking forward to that deck. <laughs> uh, Mr. Howell. So a couple of things that I wanna report out on tonight. So first of all, um, last week we had one of our first inductees and National Technical Honor Society at Westbrook Vocational. Uh, right after the meeting, also received notification that Ember Young, who is a Wyndham High School student who is in the Early Childhood Occupations Program, um, won a gold medal in the first ever Virtual Skills Maine USA uh, Championship Fair. So um, did an outstanding job with that. And so it's nice to see um, our vocational kids, both at Portland and Westbrook, uh, being recognized. Also, a couple of weeks ago, our Jobs Remain graduate students, our JMG students, participated in the first ever virtual career development conference and did everything from um, submitting videos on, um, you know, talking about themselves, talking about their resumes. Um, I had the chance to judge kids who said we're doing public speaking as to why they thought JMG was important. Um, and the students from Wyndham High School, who had students from both Wyndham and Raymond, did a great job representing um, RSU 14 and in that conference. I'm not sure if the awards have come in yet for that, so uh, we will wait and see. Uh, in addition, um, our Odyssey of the Mind teams uh, in Division One, that Team Menard um, received third place in Problem 2, Team Riley second place in Problem 2, Team Morrill, second place in problem three, and Team Miller, second place in problem five. Uh, and so our Odyssey of the Mind kids are, are participating and are continuing to um, have this opportunity while it's virtual, uh, but being able to be able to connect and still be able to do those competitions. Um, we also have received some great news from the Maine Department of Education, and I've not had the chance to communicate this out to the board, but. Uh, the district will be receiving an additional $101,647 to address some of the shortfall that we saw last year with school nutrition funds, um, realizing that we're being hit by the pandemic. And so those funds will be applied to current unpaid balances for this current year. Last year's already been audited, so we can't go back to those, but we'll be to current balances this year. I know one of you is gonna ask what the current unpaid balance is. I don't know. I did not get a chance to find that out before the meeting, but I can certainly include that in my next superintendent's notes uh, as to what the current balance is. Also heard from Jeannie uh, yesterday that the school nutrition waiver for free meals for all kids, it looks like it's gonna be extended throughout all of next year as well. Um, so wonderful resource for our kids. Um, I think of just kind of a public service announcement for any public that might be watching. Uh, we do still need to have families who may be eligible for free and reduced, even though that it's free for everyone to still complete that paperwork, uh, because it's through that paperwork that Title I's are determined, are economically disadvantaged for monies that we receive through state subsidy are determined. 
so we'll be working with Jeannie to make sure that paperwork continues to go out, um, even though families don't need it to qualify because everyone's going to qualify for free and reduced. Uh, we want to make sure that um, we're adequately and accurately describing uh, where we are as a school district with that because it does leverage additional funds. Uh, Christine, I think you were first. Do you happen to know if um, when those funds are applied to student accounts to clear up their school lunch debt, that's not taxable to those families, is it? Chris, I think, Christine, I would have to check in with Stacy on the counting back end of things to see how that gets applied to our loss in revenue. Um, and it may actually be not specific to student accounts that it's applied. It may actually be applied to the shortfall that we experience because we're not selling the same number of meals that we do okay. in a normal COVID year. Okay, so anybody who still carried a debt that, that holds, it just helps us? Correct. Okay. Correct, because we still have the, the same amount of labor, but only half the students in school. So realizing a shortfall through that. It's a great question. Marge. Um, do, uh, now I know the, they've extended it through next year. Does, I don't think, I don't know if Jeannie knows yet, but does she know how that's gonna impact the um, summer lunch program yet? We are still in the midst of trying to look at what summer because uh, in addition, we are providing a very robust summer school program this year and looking at what we can actually provide for meals and how we could do summer. And in addition, still give many of our school nutrition folks uh, a little bit of a break and a vacation. Um, okay. in a COVID year. So we're still in the midst of the planning stages with that, Marge. Okay, great, thanks. Is that That's, all you have? I, oh, one more thing. Um, school Construction Committee met last week and has narrowed down the six um, requests for, uh, for qualifications that we received, has narrowed that down to four and is now in the process of scheduling interviews with four organizations and the committee with discussions through the state um, has set a deadline or a soft deadline of July 1 for trying to come down to a final architectural firm to then um, need to make a recommendation to all of you to actually then approve that firm. Um, but they're hoping to have a recommendation before everyone leaves for the summer so that we can start that process. Uh, Bill and I had a chance to speak to Scott Brown and Scott Brown is head of all major capital projects in the state of Maine. Said we're um, on schedule with where we need to be. I thought the firms that we'd received qualifications from are firms that definitely can actually do our project. So moving forward with that, it's exciting work. Well, sir. Yes. Oh, I forgot the facilities, Kate. You've asked me twice. I should have gone through my entire list. And then facilities met Monday night. There's a lot going on in RSU 14. There certainly is. Uh, facilities met Monday night with representatives from uh, the town of Wyndham and also from Portland Water District and are looking at the Manchester Field Project and then also looking at uh, additional projects of land that is adjacent to Manchester School that's not currently being used by the RSU and I don't think ever will be used by the RSU um, as a possible component for a future North Wyndham sewer district. Uh, and so in a future date, we will bring a full presentation to the board, um, but it was a very collaborative meeting and it was an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the vision from some of the Wyndham town leaders for North Wyndham and from the Portland Water District uh, and how to address some of the groundwater quality issues that are a struggle for that particular area, especially with all the ponds and lakes around it. So future presentation for the full board, uh, how that might impact Manchester School and where it is in that uh, North Wyndham location. So Mrs. Bricks, with that, that is it. I hated to ask you again, so thank you. <laughs> um, now's the time for board roundtable. Anyone have anything they want to share or comment on at all? Um, I do. This week is Teacher Appreciation Week, and I would like to extend our sincere thank you to our teaching staff 
for their wonderful work this year and their dedication to our students and mm. going above and beyond. And appreciation seems so trite to say because it's a huge, huge thank you. Um, but we do really appreciate all of your work. So thank you so much. I don't know who was first, but I'm gonna go with Anna. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to thank the administration at Jordan Small Middle School. We just got word that we do get to have an eighth grade graduation this year. Um, and I know that was a lot of work and a lot of effort and thought went into that. So just a quick thank you to, to everyone that's helping with that um, to make that possible. Great. That's great for the students. Mm -hmm. And then Pete. All right. Just proud parent moment. Um, this is Cinco de Mayo. And a year ago, uh, my daughter Hannah was selected for the Spanish National Honor Society. And then just recently as a sophomore, she was selected to the regular National Honor Society, one of just a, a few sophomores that were uh, selected. So very proud of her and congratulations. Congratulations. Well done. Um, not to put you on the spot, Molly, but I'm wondering if there's any happenings at the high school that we should be aware of or what, what's the pulse of the nation over there? Oh boy. Um, People looking forward to the end of the school year? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, I just found out that our, we're gonna get our student council cords uh, in person um on each cohort day so that's pretty exciting oh that's great um and then i know nhs is getting an actual induction so maybe i'll be reading your daughter's name um so that's pretty exciting things are starting to open up in person and i know the seniors are happy about that so that's it's great. Really great thank you molly and for Molly's benefit, um, graduation is going to be at the, looks like it's moving forward with Cross Arena with a live in-person graduation um, with students with, with tickets and appropriate social distancing. So that looks like it's is going to move forward and the Civic Center has a great plan. So Molly, we look forward to seeing you receive your diploma there. It's going to be an exciting day for all of us. Very excited. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's great. Big difference from last year. So I'm happy for everybody. Um, any other hands? I see none. All right, may I have a motion to go into con contract negotiations? I move to approve going into executive session to discuss Raymond Wyndham Education Support Professionals Association contract negotiations with the RSU 14 School Board pursuant to 1 MRSA subsection 405 6D and not to return to regular meeting. Megan. Um, all those in favor? Kate Bricks? Yes. Jenny Butler? Yes. Marge Gavoni? Yes. Pete Hensler? Aye. Anna Keeney? Yes. Kate Leviang? Yes. And Christina Small? Yes. Okay, our final Zoom link. Here we go. Molly, have a great night. Yes, thank Thanks, you. Molly. Bye.